Last Sunday we had a hard lesson on being uh, issues about do not do a foolish thing. Is it possible to remove that echo? All right. Um, so today I promise to bring another lesson dealing with wisdom, at least to balance the two. But this seemed to be a harder lesson, more than I think the third one was easier. But I hope to uh, go through it <clears throat> and navigate through what it is saying. Proverbs chapter number 8, where we have read, and First Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 6 to 16. But these are not the only text that we can get uh, uh, this issue theme of wisdom, it's all over the scriptures. Actually, the entire scripture is the wisdom of God. Amen? And even when you go even further, you say Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. So, oh, whatever we are bringing here from this podium, from this point, when we sing, when we pray together, when we speak the word of God, when we share testimonies, when we share what God is saying, we are actually experiencing and moving in the wisdom of God. Praise the Lord. And so this, the, the, the wisdom, the scripture, there are parts, there are sections in the scripture which I have not going to, into those areas now. There are Psalms, there's Proverbs, there's Songs of Songs, there's Ecclesiastes, there's parts of the Gospel uh, in St. Mark. But uh, we are not going to, because we are not in that kind of a study, uh, there are those literature that deals with specifically with wisdom, but the entire revelation of God is his wisdom. Praise the name of the living God. Buona sifiwe. So we are talking about the excellency of wisdom. Excellency. This word is used to, to, uh, to, ex I mean, to give a title or honor to those people who are highest in the offices. Let's say the excellency, the president of the Republic of Kenya. His excellency. In other words, when all people meet together to vote and they are given the choice, they have made that man over 50 million that he should be reading and he is the highest as imagined in wisdom. So he can be called his excellency, the president. And even this country, around almost 86 million voted for him and uh, giving the mandate to read a 340 or 50 million country. So his excellency, the president. Kenya, there are governors who are called his excellency, the governor, you know, or the ambassador representing a country, his excellency, the governor. So when, when we talk about excellency, we are talking of the topmost cream, the top, the best, not the best of the, but something so nice, so gracious, so refined that whatever you say, whatever you, man of your life, whatever your performance must fit a certain standard by which you are qualified to call, to be called excellency. So when we talk about the excellency of wisdom, what are we talking about? So what is wisdom in particular? In conventional meaning, wisdom is the ability, is the quality or the ability to think and to act using knowledge that you have learned maybe in school or knowledge that you have learned in the people around you the environmental, the, 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 the learning you've done informally within the community, the experience. People have got different experiences. Some are older. If, if now I want to ask somebody about how is America, how has America gone, I go to Dominic. He has been here more than me. So his experience is more than myself. So the experience, the understanding, and even also the common sense. And also insights, something that is deposited in you that helps you to interpret and to analyze issues. When you have using this, when you have got this quality, or when you have got this ability, you are able to make informed decisions. You are able to make decisions that are not destructive. You are able to move around uh, with, a, with, with, a, with something, with a, with a compass. The compass, your compass of life is well, it's well, di it's well directed. I am trying to use, a, I am trying to get a better word, but at least when you make an informed decision, somebody will know that this is an informed decision. You don't matter when you are second year in the bachelor studies. That is not an informed decision. 
That's being, I don't want to say foolish, but you cannot just come when you are studying, when you are navigating to know studies and scholars and uh, moving on with your course, and then you come to tell me in second year of my university, unless something is wrong somewhere, I want to get married to daddy. I will send you out. I will chase you out of my presence. <laughs> <laughs> so in either way, you don't find love, neither do you want to tell to, you are focusing on your standards until they are over, and then when you are able to, to earn for yourself, then uh, if you are able to rent a, an apartment here, if you are able to own a car, if you are able to pay your bills, then when you come to tell me, when you are at least mature age, not when you are in, form, in, in class in, in grade 12, and then you tell me you have got the, this is my third boyfriend, or this is my third girlfriend, daddy. I will call you another name, not a wise person. They are buried, <laughs> they are buried wisdom is they are buried to the sun, <laughs> to the sun. Inequalities, exactly that's what I'm saying. In a ability, uh, the sun, inequalities, they are buried to the sun, inequalities and relationships. That's why you know which stage I am in. That you are able to make decisions as you move on the, uh, the land of your life. You are able to make decisions. What, what should I do at this stage? What is the best thing to do? And if you are not sure, you are somebody. You come and ask me or you call me. You know, you don't, you don't necessarily, if you, are, if you are a bit confused, then ask somebody else, is it the right decision for me to be? You have got the ability to discern. Is it the right kind of person? Is it the right company? Is it the right kind of church to attend? Or oh, whatever the case might be, you got this ability. Amen. Again, you are able to discern what is true or right. You are able to, to discern what is true and what is right. There are, there are things that are true, and there are also things that are right. And the list go on and on and on. You got the ability. Somebody say, I got the ability. When you got the wisdom, you got the ability to do something. That's why we, could, we would see young people growing and taking their mantle, like what Ian is saying here, being prophesied. It is not, it is not far-fetched. You can be the pastor next, in the next 10 years, as you have gone through the studies and the Lord blessing you with the favor. It's a good profession, by the way. It's a good profession. Being a pastor is not a bad job. Praise the Lord. But when we talk about biblical uh, concept or meaning of wisdom, we are also coming to uh, understand this. In Hebrew, wisdom is hakam, and in Greek, wisdom is sophia. That's why people live, I love no, I love study. Logos, I love to, I, Sophie, 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 philosophy. I love studying. I want to study philosophy. In other philo love, Sophie is knowledge. So, wisdom in Greek is Sophie. I love to know things, deeper things. I love that. And, and our young people and all of us here should love to get deeper into the things and especially the things of God. First, we know God is a source of all wisdom. God is a source of all wisdom. He is a source of all wisdom. And wisdom is given to people or is given to believers through the fear of the Lord. When you read Job 28, verse 28, when you read Psalm 111, verse 10, and when you read Proverbs chapter number 1, verse 7, they all speak of the same thing. Proverbs chapter number one, verse seven says that um, the fear of the Lord is a beginning of knowledge, but fools despite wisdom and discipline. I don't want to explain more than that. That is self-explanatory. If you don't want wisdom, then you definitely will love foolishness because you want to despise what God is giving out. Psalm 108. 11, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts, in other words, who follow his commands, who follow his the law, who follows his word, have good understanding. Can I hear amen? amen? To him belongs eternal praise. So you are put on a praying that is eternally binding. You are not just an artisanal thing. It is eternally quality, qualitative, you know. In other words, in every stage of your life, you are experiencing the understanding and the wisdom of God from God. The fear of the Lord 
is the beginning of wisdom. What does fear here mean? If a snake dropped from uh, top, I will not have anybody here to preach. Not unless somebody has been trained to deal with snakes uh, in this church. But I don't think any one of us is uh, uh, deal with the wildlife. Uh, all of us, we deal with others. But if a snake falls out, out there, even an artificial one, you see people startled. I'm not talking about that fear. Or even when you see a police and uh, you were a night on a seventh, on a sixth miles per hour highway, you will say, hey, and again, get the number, then you reduce your speed so that you do not want to be ticketed. I'm not talking about that kind of fear. I'm talking about being reverent, reverence and highest respect you have for the Lord. You have the highest respect or reverence. When you hear the Lord, you treat him with awe. You treat him with utmost respect. When you hear Yahweh, you are shaking. When you look at the, at the book of Ex, the, the Exodus chapter number 20, when the people of Israel went near the mountain at the commandments, and they were told, come you, come near the mountain. And they saw the crown, they saw the smoke, they saw the fire, they, saw, they had the trumpets out, they, every, they shook, their, yet they had three days of consecration. You know, they feared the Lord until they told Moses, you Moses talk to God, if he talk to us, we shall, they feared the Lord. When Elijah was in the cave and he had run away in 1 Kings chapter number, I think 19, he, when he heard the still voice, he shook and he heard his voice. He would not like to hear what the Lord is saying. He feared the Lord. He respected the Lord. Eh? You know, when, uh, when Saul was going to Damascus, chapter number 9 of Acts, and he, was, he had all the letters, he had all the authorities, and when he met the Lord on the way, he was head to the ground, and then he heard a voice, he said, Who are you, the Lord? He shook. You respect. Uttermost. Even if a president comes here, even people who are not coming to church will come. If the president was visiting us and he gave me the opportunity to introduce him, I will stand here. I will not just come like the way Ian has ushered me. I will come with utter respect and say, uh, this is Kenya community. Even those people who do not belong to KCIC, they will be here. We are happy. We feel favored. It's a blessing. You know, you use all the manner of words, the beautiful words. And then even when he's come to stand here and talk trash, you will still be crappy because he, you are visited by the highest office of the land. If you give respect to these people, why don't we give respect to God? Why don't we respect or treat him in that highest. By the way, when we come to church, who do we meet? Do we meet the pastor? Do we come to meet me? No. We come to meet the Lord himself because he is, the, he reveals how we have to worship him or to treat him. And he is also the subject. He is the object of our worship. And he is the subject of what we are doing. Otherwise, if he was not here, we could not be here. You know, look at these lakes over here. Look at those mountains. We, we, tunasema, Bwana Mungu, na shanga kabisa, nikitazama vire ulivyo. You don't treat God rightly. You treat him with uttermost respect. And this respect is not just a chief, it's not a, a, just like that. Or it's not a, assumed this respect is achieved, is achieved through obedience to his voice, through hearkening to what he has said. The prophet used to say, Thus says the Lord. The prophet used to say that, Thus says the Lord. He is not saying, but he is echoing what the Lord is saying. Thus says the Lord. When we utter and we uttermost respect or treat our God, it means we are troubling, we are healing, we are loving, we are walking, we are yearning to hear what he is saying. And what he says, we obey. We listen to him and we obey what he is saying. We observe carefully what he has said. 
what he is saying. Listen to this. In Deuteronomy chapter number 4 and verse 6 and 7. The Bible says these words. And I, um, Moses is telling the Israelites, let me read just from my notes. Observe them. In other words, he is telling the Israelites, let me start from verse 5, sorry. It's better to start from verse 5. Uh, it's bring all the meaning. Verse 5. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations. We are not designed locally. The wisdom God gives us is not just for ourselves. Even the nation should see this and love this God we believe in. Can I hear you, man? You know, as people, well, I would say I love the Lord Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior of my life. But it is not only for myself alone. A Muzungu should see what I am, and he, he or she wishes to be what I am. Another nation, another person, we are the, where we are praised as a people of God is the highest top of position. So that other nation, you come and ask, what do you do? Or what kind of people are you? And you, say, you tell them, we belong to Yahweh. That's what Josh, I mean, Moses is saying here. That the nations who will hear about these decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You shall be called great by what you do and you treat this world. Amen? And in verse 7 it says, what other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? What other nation is so great? What other people are we like we Christians of KCIC? What kind of, what other people are so great like us? Like you, like me. When we call upon the name of the Lord, he is near us. Tukwitapo, buwana, unashuka, he is near us. He is already available there. Wisdom is bound in doing the will of God. And what is the will of God? The will of God is to listen and to hear his voice and obey it and move together with it. Jesus told, said, told his disciples, the will of the Father is for you to listen and to believe of him who he sent, of the son he sent of this world. You believe of, the, of whom he sent into this world. In other words, you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a benchmark. Can I say Amen. <laughs> And it is said to forsake his word, it is forsake one wisdom. So therefore, if you make a decision to attend a Bible study, it's a wise decision. If you make a decision to attend a prayer meeting, it's a wise decision. If you make a decision even in your busy schedule, like the way we are sitting on Sunday, there's not, a, there's not a book to read when you have nothing else to do. You plan to read this book, and you read it loudly. You know, like the way we call people here to read. Uh, do you think it's something funny to read it in your own house? Is it funny to read this book? Uh, we, I meet somebody, let me not call his name, because there are people watching him. Uh, but he said there are people watching him. Let's, let's imagine this is George in his house, and he is alone. And uh, he wakes up tomorrow morning, before he goes to work or to other, attending to other activities, he wakes up in the morning, he takes a shower, blah, 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 takes breakfast. And uh, before he even lights the car or anything, he, he says, this is the leading of the word of God in this house. Second Chronicles 16, in verse 1, to follow him. Nobody else is in the house. <laughs> Nobody else is in the house. But you stand there in the house and say, in the 36th year of Asa reign, Basha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Lama to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa, king of Judah. 
Asa then took the silver and gold out of the treasure of the Lord's temple and on his own prowlers and sent it to ben and on and on until you reach verse 9. And I will finish at verse 9. You listen to me. For the eyes of the Lord reach loud throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You have done a foolish things, and from now on you will be at war. Is that a wise thing to do? Is that a good practice? When you wake up, you take Paul urges Timothy to attend to public reading of the word. It is important to take the word, not the last thing, but the priority. You read it, even read it aloud. How moments of devotions, how 30 minutes or one hour, when you get deeper into the word of God all alone, you now, it nurtures you, it nourishes you, it strengthens you, it, it, the word makes you stronger to face the challenge that is here. There are a lot of things around the air. You know, there are a lot of information in news about that, news about COVID, news about destruction. But when you are feasted in the word of the Lord, you become stronger and you say, it is possible with God to move forward. You are depositing something great because by the word, the word was created. By the word, it is sustained. By the word, it will be, the Lord will sustain us. And so when you give this word, when you put this word into your heart, you are putting something eternal, something that is, cannot be destructed by the environment. You are making yourself strong, a fortified city, a fortified heart. Ah, oh, come on. And watching news sometimes, news of, uh, news of uh, dis disappointment and the like, have a chapter to read every day. Have a chapter, have a, the, our data bread to guide you in an in your exposition. Make it a habit, make it the, your way of life. Hallelujah. And we shall have many strong ways. And we should not even come in here to struggle so much to preach because all the guys are in the word. When we are standing here, there's a revelation. There's a psalm. There's a spiritual song. When we stand, we rejoice together. Ah. Not come people to doze here. People come and energized, even to sing and to worship, to pray. When we say this is the time for worship, everybody's shouting and uh, he, is, he or she is enjoying the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. When we are in the, uh, at the front, when we are before the king, see, at the king, mama, bound, wazito, wana, wana imba, sikama, sikama, wana, maifupa. Me, ina, ya, ginyokali, kwa, oyo, ha, oyo, ma, ha, hali, ya, go, diye, ya, go, diye, kwa, kwa, massage. Todu, ole, ya, ini, ya, bere, ya, mune, ne, ni, horo, mune, ne. No, he, di, ya, roka, bere, ya, mwada, ni. Ay, nuli, we, bona. He is still stuck on the ground. Excellency of wisdom. Uh, Proverbs chapter number eight. Wisdom, in this chapter number eight and chapter number nine, wisdom is personified. Wisdom is led here as a person, as a woman, as a she. And the wisdom is talking. And when we talk about a she, you know what we are talking about is a productive person. Is somebody when you give her love, she will bring you a lot of good things. Is somebody when you give her a piece, a kilo of meat, she will bring you dinner. She multiplies wisdom. Mot I mean, <laughs> a woman of wisdom will do great things in the home. Bonas Vesana, even in the church, in the community, and they are coming up. Bonas Vesana. Can I hear amen? Okay. So wisdom is calling out. Here is she is personified. Do not, do not wisdom call out. Does not understanding raise her voice. Or the hates along the way, where the path meet, she takes her stand. It, chapter number eight and verse, uh, chapter nine, they are talking about wisdom. Personified as a person. And here she says, in chapter number eight and chapter number nine, wisdom tells of, it tells the excellent things. Let me just tell that statement. Tells of the excellent things that you find in wisdom. Verse six, verse six, let me read verse six. Listen, for I have other things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. In this chapter and verse six, it is telling us the excellent things you find in wisdom when he, she is not calling out in vain. She is calling out to give things that are excellent, that are glorious, that are powerful. In other words, what are these excellent things? 
things that are related to God, things that will make us relate with God. Secondly, things that will address the immortal soul, the immortal soul, and also things that will address our everlasting state of our lives after this life. Things that relate to God, to our immortal soul, the soul of our lives that will transit throughout the life to eternity and how the other lives will be. Praise the name of the living God. So, wisdom deals with the entirety, the entirety of a being. Entirety of a person. Kiria wegie we wisdom nego tara we uge wa gai nego kualeria. And you cannot adulate this concept. If you come to that realization, you seek this wisdom more than anything, like nothing else matters. This will be a priority. You should search wisdom and decide it like nothing else matters. Okay, verse 11 it is saying, wisdom is more precious than rubies. And nothing you desire can compare with her. Nothing can compare with her. Nothing can compare with wisdom. It is more precious. By the time of Solomon writing this, rubies was the most expensive metal or gem you could ever find. And even today, when I checked yesterday, I mean, when I was preparing and I checked some of the pricing of this, actually, I was getting... <laughs> I saw, I went to Google and find there's a link costing 89,000 US dollars. I wish a person can come and tell us she's going to get married and the kind of a link she wants is of that rubies worth. Imagine in one link. If only it will cost 89, how much? Uh, some people do not like me to go to that level, but how much is that in Kenya sharing? That's a water plot and a house. See, dear, umenunua plot na ukajenga unaka na inaweko na nani? Jalibu tembea na yao sehemu zingine. Ijulikane? Ijulikane. Utamambiwa towa kidole au ukishidua, tutatowa pamoja na kidole. Togo tini hamo na kiara. It is expensive. Nothing compares with her wisdom. Nothing compares with her. It's so expensive. It goes to thousands and thousands of values compared with the things we can see. If a link can be worth 89, what about a, a necklace? Or a cross, like I wish my cross here was this kind of man. When I preach, I say, Bonas Fesana, I am not that cheap. This necklace you see and the cross. It's worth a hundred thousand rubies. So uh, even the word I'm bringing is not cheap words. But as for it, so many amen. <laughs> it is expensive. If those things can be so valuable and we treat them with all utmost respect and desire, what about wisdom? Wisdom in chapter in verses uh, uh, verses seven, uh, chapter number four, verse. 7 to 9, inasema maneno haya. Inasema, wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it will cost all you have, get understanding. Esteem her, esteem this wisdom, and she will exhort you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. Verse 9, she will set a garland, a crown, the people who are winning medals in the, in the Olympics, they are receiving medals of honor because of the, what they have won. Now, wisdom will give you a garland of grace on your head and present you with a crown of sprada. Hallelujah! We will get you. Wonderful young men, young, young women, a church full of wisdom, a house full of wisdom, has is, is have got a garland of sprada. It's beautiful. When you visit them, you feel it. When you are worshiping, you feel it. When you are doing your everyday calls, it is wonderful. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. And it calls those people who have found wisdom to be blessed. That's why it is said those who get wisdom are blessed. People look for blessings. 
material blessing, when you are blessed, uh, when, when you acquire a lot of wealth or a quad of properties or whatever it is, people will refer you to be a blessed man. And that's true. When you get a car, you get a shoe, uh, you get whatever, you are able to move around with your things and things like that. People will call you blessed because of what they can see and they feel. But maybe in a, you are not. Maybe in a, you are not. You get people who are so rich, so educated, highly educated, well refined, they take a gun and they shoot themselves. Because deep in their heart, there was something, there was a void, there was something missing. You know, people will be, they will show all these manner of things, but they are depressed in one way or the other. They will find it love walking around, they will find it hard. They are not able to deal with their pressures and things like that. But when you are able to deal with the situations and navigate through life, you are man and using wisdom, you will be able to win battles. And here the Bible calls the person who fights wisdom is a breasted man or a breasted woman. Breasted is a man who fights wisdom. The man who gains understanding for wisdom, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She, wisdom, is more precious than the lobbies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Praise the Lord. Present is that church. Present is that family. Present is that woman, that man who fights wisdom. Because in him, Wisdom we will get, we will give her or him understanding. And wisdom is more profitable than silver. The things we work very hard for and we invest a lot of our times and we never less sometimes. The, it's better than that what we earn, we invest a lot of in our energy. It's profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubbish. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Why? Let me finish by this uh, a small text here. We are, in the second reading we have read from verse 6, actually even from verse, verse 18 of chapter number 1, it's talking about wisdom. Paul addresses the church, the Corinthian church, the church at Corinth, and he calls it the church of God at Corinth. Verse 1, chapter number 1, verse 1, Paul called to an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brothers, blah, 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 to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior as ours. Amen. You like to that church in Corinth, church of God at this city of Corinth. Colony was a wicked city, and the, it is always said, if there could be a church established in Colony, then there can be a church everywhere, including your heart. If you could have a church in Virginia, Colony, but you could have a church everywhere where you are. But this church had divisions. You start off from verse one, you hear divisions. You hear in chapter number three, he calls them uh, people who are ordinary because of petty things that were going on between them. You go to chapter number five, chapter number four, they are going before secular judges. You go to chapter number five again, there's a man who has taken a wife from his father and they are staying together and they are coming to church. You go to chapter number six, Paul is saying, everything is permissible to me, but not, not all things are permissible. Chapter number seven, you go and you find that these are, he, he, is, he is addressing the issues that deals with, uh, with uh, the, the marriage relationship. Chapter number nine, he talks about his own body as an apostle, the rights of an apostle, and the way they treated him, the way they regarded him. You know, and even he said, I pre uh, propel my body so that I'm not disqualified. And he, the story goes on and on. There are issues that you read in the book of Colin. And one of the issues, they, they loved knowledge very much. And they, if nothing does not reach their peak, they refer it as foolishness. And so Paul is saying, I never came to you with eloquence. Real restroom. No, if I strong here, the one of the gospel. Uh, the current St. Luke, uh, and St. Uh, Gospel St. Luke, 
and later I wrote the Corinthians, uh, chapter number two, verse six. Now even people come here after one week and they go to Nairobi and when they start preaching, they, they start twinking. I was in states and I was given greetings from Kisha C and he has been having the accent. So Paul is saying, I never came with that accent. I never came with that eloquence. I came with a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what I came with. And that's what I want to experience with you guys in this church. Because these guys loved wisdom or philosophy. So he come to tell them it is not about that which you think. It's about the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what makes the difference. And so he tells them, what you treat as foolishness, you know, when I, whatever I'm talking, you treating as foolishness, that is the power of God. And what you think before God is foolishness. So you better get wisdom, like in chapter number 8, even in Second in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, wisdom is still crying to the church in Corinth and even the church at KCIC to get wisdom. And what does he say here? Paul refers to wisdom as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom is discovered by the Holy Spirit. And he says in this chapter where we are reading, is that the Spirit enters into the depths of God. It penetrates into the most secret of all councils. By the way, God does not entrust people who are careless in their ways of life who are careless in their morals, who are careless in their, in, their, in, in their investment or spending of their time. He entrusts people with the Holy Ghost so that they can get deeper into the things of God. And we need to be a church that get deep into the things of God. We shall love the things of God that are referred to the world as foolishness, but they give us our destiny. They give us our lives. They give us our hope. They give us our power. They give us our strength to move forward. Bonus for sana. Praise the name of the living God. Wisdom actually reaches to a point and say, it is a mystery. You can only experience it. It is the hidden, hidden wisdom of God. Only the revealed can get into that depth. Because what you get in that deep with the Lord is beyond anybody's understanding or anybody's explanation. You can never experience, explain it other than experience it yourself. Paul is telling the Corinthians, the wisdom of God is from the Holy Ghost and has enabled us to get into the deep things of God. We get revelation. We get into what season we are in. We know how to act. You know how to pray. You know how to conduct yourself in these troubled times. You get deep with the Lord. You bring something with whatever the Lord is revealing in your life so that you can reveal to others. Hallelujah. You get into the deep things of God. And Paul calls wisdom that wisdom is Jesus Christ. He is the power and the wisdom of God. So get deeper into the Lord Jesus Christ. And here Paul says in Corinthians Colossians 2, 3, in Christ all treasures of wisdom are hidden. So when you are telling the Corinthians wisdom is a mystery, it helps you to get into the depths, into the deep things of God, then they are hidden in Christ. So when you have Christ and you grow in him to maturity, hallelujah, you grow in him to maturity, you are experienced, you are being entrusted with the deep things of God. I think I need to come with a sermon on what are the deep things of God. Let me just give you a small tips of God. Listen, that did happen. When we had the solemn assembly, uh, in the solemn assembly, it may, make no, it may, may not make sense to you. But uh, we had uh, this man, maybe one of the days we shall bring him here. But when we started praying, eh? when we started praying, and uh, he led us, we were all in a mood of prayer, whoever was there. We got deep into prayers to the extent that you could not utter any more words. Then you let the Holy Ghost guide you or lead you to the way ahead. 
So when you are waking up, you feel relieved. You feel okay. You feel like you have been swimming. You feel like you have been, in a, in a sense, you have got, sometimes even when you get deeper into the Lord, you feel like, can I open my eyes to watch what I am seeing? But when you open, you are not seeing anything. But when you close, you are seeing great things and wonderful things going on. Rerouting, rerouting, rerouting your spiritual life and your spiritual compass. It is happening. Can somebody say amen? Wake up, habo, habo, too. But the things of God are hidden in Christ and they are revealed to us through the wisdom who is Jesus Christ. In Christ, the treasure of the truest and the highest wisdom is realized. And this is true wisdom. Therefore, as believers, therefore, who we are here to this afternoon as I come to a cross, what is expected of us? One, to have wisdom, it to have it to, to have wisdom from God, from the Holy Spirit, who is Jesus Christ, is a great blessing. Is a great blessing. A great blessing. It's a great honor to be entrusted with the divine wisdom. Amen. Can somebody say amen? It's a glorious privilege for Christian to have it revealed to us. You know, like when you choose to come to church, it's a wise thing. When you go to this legal cycles of being here, we are waking up, we are singing, we are sitting down, we are giving, we are praying together, you are attentive to this word, then we sing a song to finish the service. When you do all this every other Sunday, or when it get, become a way of your life, you, you, you get yourself transformed and changed. The way you came is not the way you are going home. You have been challenged to go and seek wisdom. Hallelujah. You go to guess. Um, uh, you, if you are serious in your Christian walk, you will go and tell the Lord tonight, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me this wisdom. I want to know it. I want to walk with it. I want to understand. I want to pray more intelligently. I want to act more intelligently in this country. I want to lead my family by wisdom. I want to tell the people in Kenya, uh, my people, I want to guide them by wisdom. I want to have wisdom. Praise the name of the living God. That wisdom that is revealed. The wisdom which we all teach every Sunday and everywhere, even in these Matanga issues that we are coming. Wherever the word of God is shared, whether in a funeral service, whether in a wedding service, whether in a seminar, wherever it is, so long as it's the word of God. See, Jesus aliena kule kwa Razalo Kakuta Meziko. Si aliena matanga. Si aliena moyo tena. So even whichever the situation, the Lord revives our souls. Amen? There is always an opportunity for you to grow or to become better in every situation. Praise the name of the living God. It prepares us for everlasting glory and everlasting happiness that is ahead of us. And this is a fitting prayer for all of us. Can you stand as we pray now? Paul wrote to the Ephesians uh, a verse here I am going to share with you as I pray together with this family. I will call them to come here in front so that we can pray for Beatrice Kamau and Josh Kamau who are admitted in the hospital. Uh, Paul to the Ephesians he wrote this word. Uh, Ephesians chapter number 1 verse 17. The Bible says this word. It's a fitting prayer for you. It's a fitting prayer you can pray for your children. You pray for your husband. You pray for your wife. You pray for your family. Uh, when you wake up, among the prayers you include for your children as they grow in this country, make it this a prayer. Paul is saying in verse 15, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks, actually give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Verse 17, I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, the God, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, who give us all things, with all, without measure, endless, limitless, that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better 
I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparable great power of us who believe. And on and on, Paul says, that you may be filled with the spirit of wisdom. Not the spirit of other things, but you may be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. What a blessing you can give to your children, even when those who are growing their mother's womb. That my son, this son that is growing, or this daughter, that she may be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation as she grows. Even whatever stage of your life you are in, that you may also be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Is that not a fitting prayer? Is it not a fitting prayer that the Lord may grant us as a church a spirit of wisdom and revelation, that we may know him better than when you come to this Sunday, this Sunday, next Sunday, across the year 52 Sundays, you know the Lord better than you started, amen? And you continue to grow. May the Lord fill us with a spirit of revelation. May he fill us with a spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may know him better. Amen? Can somebody say amen? And so we want to say you are God. Lord, we can pray for this lady who is admitted in the hospital. I can call them to come here. Lord, we can pray for this family. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to there is no for argument. You are God all by yourself. Don't you know this chorus? Don't you know this chorus?